In November 2014, the world witnessed one of the most shocking cyber attacks of history. An attack that not only disrupted the global entertainment industry, but also blurred the line between cybercrime, political warfare, and Hollywood. Today, we're diving into the 2014 Sony hack, how it unfolded, the impact it had, and how it marked a turning point into the way we think about cybersecurity. We could have spent more on cybersecurity. This wasn't just a symbol data preach. This was a digital attack with a political agenda, sending shockwaves through the entertainment industry and beyond. Let's break down exactly what happened. On November 24th, 2014, Sony Pictures Entertainment found itself under siege. Hackers, identifying themselves as the Guardians of Peace, launched an unprecedented cyber attack against the entertainment giant. They infiltrated Sony's systems and stole a massive amount of sensitive data, including personal information about employees, unreleased movies, and private email conversations between top executives. It was an all-out digital attack. The hackers didn't just steal the data, they actually got rid of the original data after they made the copies. And then they destroyed Sony's network, making it unusable for days. They also left very chilling messages demanding Sony to pull its new film, Interview, a comedy that depicted the assassination of North Korea's leader. If your computer is already infected, then the malware will embed itself into the system. The hackers even threatened with violence if the movie was released. As the days went on, the hackers continued leaking more and more data. Emails between Sony executives that exposed sensitive internal conversations, as well as unreleased movies like Fury, Annie, and still Alice. But the damage wasn't just digital, it was reputational too. Hollywood's top stars were dragged into the mess, as private information about their salaries and movie deals were leaked to the public. Leaked what? The question that everyone wanted answered was who is actually behind this attack? Who are the Guardians of Peace? At first, this group claimed responsibility, but the question quickly turned to North Korea, especially when it became clear that the attack was actually carried out before the release of the interview, a film that mocked North Korea's president and did not really set well with the North Korean regime. Although the North Korean government denied any responsibility for the cyber attack, the US government actually said that it had very strong evidence that North Korea was the one responsible. However, multiple security experts criticized the FBI for the weakness of the evidence provided, but the National Security Agency at the time reported that it had very solid evidence, but they were not able to release it due to security reasons. We don't want to get too specific for security reasons. The fallout of the Sony attack was actually catastrophic. Not only did the breach expose very sensitive data, but it also created a massive public relations nightmare for the company. As mentioned before, a lot of emails between top Sony executives were leaked, and some of the content was downright embarrassing. For example, an email exchange between two top Sony executives referred to Hollywood stars like Angelina Jolie and Adam Sandler in a less than flattering manner, leading for backlash from the public and the Hollywood superstars. But the damage didn't really stop there. Unreleased movies were uploaded online, costing Sony millions and millions of dollars in lost revenue. The company also faced a lot of lawsuits from actual employees whose data was exposed, including social security number and medical records. Initially, Sony reacted by shelving the movie, a move that President Barack Obama actually criticized in a later conference when addressing the attack. Barack Obama, the 44th president of the United States. We know who Barack Obama is. I quote, if somebody is able to intimidate folks out of releasing a satirical movie, imagine what they start doing when they see a documentary they don't like or news reports they don't like. President Obama at the time vowed a proportional response to the attack, but he didn't elaborate on the specifics of how this response will be carried out. Movie stars Seth Rogen and James Franco actually ended up canceling the rest of their promotional tour for the movie, scared by the multiple threats of the Guardians of Peace, as they claimed that they will carry out attacks that remind the people of the horrific 9-11 attack. However, Sony then reversed their decisions and actually decided to release the movie to theaters, scoring a mediocre 52% rating on Metacritic. Beyond Sony, the attack actually sent shockwaves throughout Hollywood and the entire tech industry. Studios and other businesses realized just how vulnerable they were to attacks like this one. It wasn't just about stolen data. 
it was about trust. Hollywood's most private communications were now exposed for everyone to see. And that had the potential to reshape how the entire industry did business. So was this an act of cyber warfare or corporate espionage? The lines between the two were very blurred in this situation. While typical cyber attacks might be motivated by financial gain or intellectual property theft, this one had a clear political motivation. North Korea actually wanted to stop the release of the movie that they claimed was an insult to their leader. In this case, the attack wasn't just about stealing the data, it was about sending a message. The Sony hack changed the way we think about cybersecurity. After the attack, both Sony and the wider entertainment industry realized just how vulnerable they were to these kinds of attacks. Sony, for example, had to completely overhaul its internal systems and spent millions of dollars strengthening its cybersecurity posture. The attack also sparked a larger conversation about the need for global standards for cybersecurity. It wasn't just that Sony was at risk, it was any company anywhere that was dealing with sensitive information. In the digital world, no one is truly safe. Governments around the world actually started started taking cyber attacks more seriously. The US government even imposed some sanctions on the North Korean regime in response to the Sony hack, making it one of the first instances of cyber warfare being met with real-world, tangible outcomes. The Sony hack wasn't just a wake-up call for the entertainment industry, it was a reminder of the power that cyber attacks can hold. What started as a dispute over a simple movie escalated into a global crisis, revealing how digital warfare can disrupt everything from Hollywood to international relations. As we continue to live in an increasingly connected world, it's clear that cybersecurity should be at the forefront of our minds. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more deep dives into cybercrime and the world of IT. Don't forget to check out deontraining.com for the best IT and cybersecurity certifications out there and I'll see you in the next one.